Hello there, I'm Michelle from Crafty Betty and today I'm demonstrating how to make a mother and daughter apron set just in time for that Easter baking session using Simplicity Pattern 8815 and some beautiful fabrics from Bombay Stores Fabrics in Bradford. So the fabric I've chosen to work with is this beautiful vegetable cotton fabric here. Not only would it be great for an apron, it would also be good for children's clothes, costumes, fancy dress, bunting, the list is endless really. I'm using Simplicity 8815, which does both the adult and the child apron. I'm using a green lining, a coordinating Gutterman thread, and some matching green webbing. On the pattern over it gives you the fabric requirements, how much you need for each size and any extra items that you need to produce the apron. So it always looks quite daunting when you take the pattern out of the envelope but if you break it down it's really not as difficult as you think. If you first look at your cutting layouts it shows you which pieces you need for both the child's and the missus apron which is what they call the adult's one. And then this here is your pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it out and we're going to cut out the pieces. Each size has a different line pattern to follow when you're cutting the pieces out and you only need to cut out the pieces that are detailed in the instruction sheet for that particular style you've chosen. On this particular pattern, the main body of the apron is cut on the fold, so it opens out into one large piece. Therefore, fold your fabric over into two and place your pattern piece for the main part of the apron and the flounce right up to the edge of the fabric and then cut it out. Remove the pattern paper and give it a good press. I've adapted the pattern slightly here as I like to line my pockets to make them a little bit more stable. So I've cut an extra piece of fabric in the green lining for each pocket. I've just used the original piece as a template. So wind your bobbin, making sure it's the same type of thread that you're using on the top of your machine and then thread your sewing machine ready for sewing. So take one pattern piece of your pocket fabric and also one of the lining pieces and you're going to place them on top of each other, patterns facing inwards. Now you're going to sew just around the edge of the pocket, not across the top, just down the sides along the curved edge and back up the side. Make sure you don't sew across the top. Before you turn the pocket the right way around, take a small pair of scissors and just snip up to your stitch line, not through your stitching, just around the curves and this helps give it a little bit of stretch so when you turn it through it keeps that nice shape. Then give it a good press with the iron. So you're now going to turn the edges inwards just to provide a neat edge. So just tuck in the top bits inside and then give them a good press. Now 
and then we're going to top stitch right across the top of the pocket. Referring back to your instructions, it shows you where to place the pockets according to the dots on the pattern. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We use tailor's tacks for this, so depending on what size you've chosen, there's a small, medium and large on your pattern, we're just going to put a little bit of thread through, so you just go in and out the fabric, tie a little knot, and then when you pull your pattern piece off, it will show you where to place the top of the pocket. Repeat the same on the other side, but you just need to turn your pattern paper over so that the pattern piece fits on the other side of the apron. Sew your pockets onto the apron by stitching about a quarter of an inch in from the edge, all the way down, round the side and back up to the other side. Don't forget to do either reverse or locking stitch just at the start and at the end so your threads don't come undone. So going back to your instruction sheet, it's now asking you to baste along the upper edge of the flounce. This basically means just stitch close to the edge all the way around. Now it's on the short edge of the curve of your flounce. This just helps to give your fabric a little bit of stability before we attach it to the apron. So now we're going to attach the flounce to the main part of the apron. Make sure that you're pinning it with the wrong sides of the fabric facing each other.
Now we need to apply some bias tape to that edge that you have just sewn. I'll show you how to do that now. You can buy bias binding tape, but in this instance, I'm going to use the lining fabric and show you how to create your own. So get your fabric and you're going to cut along the diagonal length of it. And we're going to do two inch wide strips. Open it out and then fold in towards the centre each of the side pieces, pressing them in. Once you've done that, fold the whole thing in half so all the raw edges are tucked in and that's how you make bias binding. So using pins or clips, you're going to apply the binding so it sits either side of that edge that you've sewn when you put the flounce to the main part of the apron. On the sewing machine, sew along the edge of the binding using a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch or something a bit more decorative just to attach the binding to the apron.
So you need to repeat the whole process again for the adult sized. And I've placed them on a mannequin so you can see the stage we're at now. So pretty much your apron is almost there. Now we need to look at adding um, the binding all the way around the edges and applying the neck straps and the waist straps. So I've just cut those out of webbing or you can make your own out of the fabric. So I'm pinning on the binding all the way around the edge. So I've made quite a bit of it in long lengths and I'm just going to pin it all the way around every single edge of the apron and then we're going to sew it on. So now I'm sewing on the binding all the way around the apron. You can use a straight stitch, a zigzag or something a little bit more decorative if you like. So all that's left to do now is to attach the straps around the neck and at the waist. So I'm just tucking over, folding over the raw edge of the webbing just to hide that um, frayed section and then we're just going to attach it with a straight stitch, probably go forwards and backwards a couple of times just to attach it in place on the apron. You'll see the markings on your pattern where you need to do this. So repeat this on both aprons and then I just added a little butterfly button trim just at the top where the join of the bias binding is and there we have it, two beautiful aprons, an adult and a child's apron, perfect for that springtime baking. <laughs>